If you want to believe that there is only one life form in the universe, which you're entitled to do, um, then it, a corollary of that is that the origin of life on this planet must have been a, a fantastically improbable event, so much so that any theory we come up with has got to be a very implausible theory. Right. Because if it were plausible, <laughs> there would be life all over the universe, yeah, which I suspect there probably is. And just saying that if you want to believe that life only arose once, then what you're looking for in a theory of the origin of life is not a plausible theory such as you could replicate in a chemistry lab. So, I mean, so there is a lot of evidence that all life on Earth comes from a common single-celled and Yes, the, ev the evidence for that is, is that the DNA code is all but universally the same in every living form that's ever been examined. And the odds of that coming about convergently is extremely low. So I think just about everybody is convinced that every single life form, at least those that have been looked at, it descends from a common ancestor it's because it's got the same machine code at its base. There now, are does, that, does that strike you as, as a puzzle or just something that we need no, to No, I don't think it's a puzzle. I mean, it, it, it could be that more than one life form arose originally. And we just don't see and, them. And, we don't, and, and as Darwin said originally, Darwin said um, one of them ate up all the others. Right. So that, that, that's a possibility. Paul Davies, your physics colleague, um, thinks it's worth looking to see if there are other life forms. They, just, they may be around on Earth, but never been, been found. Um, I, I liken that to the looking for your keys under the lamppost. And when somebody lost his keys, and so he's looking under, under the lamppost for the keys. And somebody else asks him, why are you looking under the lamppost? Is that where you lost your keys? No, but that's where the light is. Right. So, um, uh, if we're asking the question, is there life elsewhere in the universe? We can't go elsewhere in the universe yet. It's very difficult to... Well, the, the, so let's look But here. the universe can come to us, and some have suggested that maybe the origin, you know, life in some yes. form may have come here on a, you know, um, on a meteor, or got yes. pummeled off of yes. Mars. Well, that, that's not so implausible as it, it was once thought to be. Yeah. Um, it's the theory of panspermia, um, invented by a Swedish... Um, a Swedish biologist called Arrhenius about a century ago now. Um, and it was espoused by Fred Hoyle, the astronomer, very distinguished astronomer, but he, he kind of went adrift a bit on, on evolution anyway. Um, directed panspermia is a, is a more far-fetched idea, which was actually favoured, I think, a bit tongue-in-cheek. You mean that uh, actually someone sent it yes, here to, I mean, to see life? Uh, Francis Crick, the, 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 the great um, co-discoverer of the structure of DNA, um, together with Leslie Orgel, suggested that, um, we, that our planet could have been deliberately seeded by an alien civilization. I, I think it was a joke. I mean, I, I mean they, they, they sort of presented it as though it was a serious theory. But, but, right. um, um, so, so when you consider the, the rich spectrum of life on Earth that all, say, arose from this singular starting point. Do you find that the, the range is sensible relative to the environment that life found itself trying to adapt to? Or do you find it strange that we don't have you know, beings with you know, nine eyes or eyes that work under completely different principles or I don't know, some being that would be sensitive to gravitational waves. Yes. And, you know. now that, I'm very fascinated by that kind of question. Um, and you can get a long way by looking around the animal kingdom and, and, and asking how many times different things have evolved. And you can work out how many times they've evolved because you can work out what the tree of life actually is. You, you know which animals are close relations of, of, of which. So we know, for example, that there are, I think it's nine different principles of eyes, different, really? different ways of doing, doing the optics. And that eyes have evolved independently several dozen times. One estimate is, is more than 40 times. Really? Um, so eyes actually evolve with great ease, with great frequency. Um, and they're got, all sensitive to the same part of the spectrum because uh, of the not sun? Not exactly the same, but it's overlapping. Right. Uh, insect eyes move towards the ultraviolet, for example. Um, 
but it, it's, it's nice to think that all the ways of making an eye that physicists have thought of have been thought of by evolution um, in, in rather interesting ways. I mean, the, com the compound eye works in a totally different way from the camera eye, which is what, which is what we have. There are mollusks which have a, a, a reflector eye, a, 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 a parabolic reflector. You mean like a radio dish out there? Yes, really? yes. But, but optical. Wow. Uh, so um, there, there are scallops that have, that have that. Um, and there are lots of different kinds of compound eye, lots of different kinds of camera eye. Um, and they've evolved independently. Other things like, say, um, echolocation, navigating by sonar, by, by sound waves, that's evolved four times independently uh, in bats, whales, and two different families of birds, cave-dwelling birds, in independently. So that's rather more reluctant to evolve, but nevertheless right. it has evolved more than once. Th some things have evolved only once, and so you feel they're improbable things. Right. Mm. So, so in trying to understand the likelihood or not of the emergence of life, and therefore to try to gain some insight into the question that you made reference to, whether we're alone or there's other life out there in the universe, you know, sometimes people write down this, um, this Drake equation, which I, every time I see it, I always feel like it's, it's misrepresenting the situation because it's not so much an equation describing the actual likelihood of the arising of life. It's more a way of uh, encapsulating our ignorance of yeah. the all variety of qualities of the universe mm. that we really don't have any insight into. So any number that comes out of it is really just totally dependent on the ignorance that we have regarding the numbers that go into it. But, but be that as it may, when, when you think about that life may have just started once on this planet, does that diminish your expectation that the search for extraterrestrial life will be successful? Well, we can't escape from the fact that it did arise on this planet. I mean, yeah. That's a, it's a, well, it's, so it's a sample it's size a, of one, and what yes. do you do with that? I would love another one. I mean, it, it, yeah. it, 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 um, because we just don't know. And I'm, I'm very intrigued by the question, how much of what we know about this, this form of life yeah had to be so, because there's only one way for it to be. For example, does there have to be a, something like a gene? I think the answer is yes. Does it have to be... I mean, just because you need something to, care, to, 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 to propagate double, yes, the information. Yes. Right. Um, does it have to be a one-dimensional array? Does it have to be digital? Right. I think it that probably has to be digital. Does digital it, because otherwise errors would too creep much, in too, too, too much error, yes. Right. Um, does it have to be a one-dimensional string of data which DNA is, and I don't think that's clear. I, mean, I could imagine a two-dimensional matrix, right. um, which could be read, not three-dimensional, because you can't get inside the, um, right. the, the three-dimensional blob. Um, so that's kind of question. Does there have to be sex? Would you expect to get eyes? I, I, I bet you'd get eyes. Um, because, because eyes have happened so many times here. But presumably if it was a star that emitted strongly in a completely different part of the spectrum, then that's maybe you, sensitivity sure, there yes. or something of that sort. Yes, yes, exactly. So, um, so it leads to, to the question then. Um, if you had your choice, in some sense, as to what we would find if we encountered life in another world, would you want it to be the same in order that you would have a unified theory of life in some sense? Or would you rather it be different so that now you just see this grand spectrum of possibility with us just being one of many? I'd be delighted by either. I mean, if, right. if, it, if, it, were, if it were too similar, if for, <clears throat> if, for example, you found life on Mars and it was DNA-based and the DNA code was the same... Right, then, then it's I, probably the same. Then it's got to be contamination. Right. Um, because we, kn we know that... So we mean we're Martians. It could have come from there. It could and have come from right. there. It, right. But we, we know that a lot of meteorites have come from, from Mars. So right. That, so, but if, it's, um, if it were DNA but a different DNA code, that would be rivetingly exciting. Right. If it were not DNA but something like... You know, another... Um, uh, polymer, um, gosh, it would be fascinating. It would yeah. be amazing. Um, I think it would be 
the most exciting discovery ever, actually, to find, to find something like, like that. I, I mean, we, we, as you say, we've got a sample of one. L life on this planet is uniform at the biochemical level. Even, even great big creatures like us, we do our biochemistry quite largely using tricks that were discovered by primordial bacteria. And, yes. they, and many of them are in us doing the same trick. We've just simply commandeered them. 